Hebrews chapter 8. Say this with me. I am greatly blessed. I am, greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am highly favored. And, I am and I am deeply loved. In the beloved one. The beloved one. Jesus Christ my Savior. I hear the Father saying to me, you are my beloved, and I am well pleased. You are Jesus Christ, and I am well pleased that you made the choice to come into the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, that, that's the way God sees us, because he sees us all in Jesus Christ. His, his sentiments to us are the same as they are to Jesus. And he says over you and I, my beloved daughter, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. You know, I think sometimes we take for granted how important uh, accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior is. You know, it, it, it seems relatively simple, but at the same time, it changes everything for the, purple, for the person who has received. You, know, you understand? I mean, uh, the Word of God is very clear that uh, uh, you'll never be separated from the love of God, from, from the kingdom of God. You know, uh, in the Bible, uh, the word death is used many times as separation. Eternal damnation is just separated totally from God, his presence, his goodness, his comfort, his likeness, you know. And so we are, we are, we are grateful that God uh, has accepted us. And the beloved, and and, and he is very, uh, he is very uh, clear about who you and I are as being in Christ. Amen. Old things are passed away; all things become new. Amen. And 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 uh, it says that he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he? Uh, not with him uh, freely give us all things. Amen? So we have a glorious gospel and we are so glad amen to be a part of this great kingdom of almighty God. Amen? And so um, when people say that you know I don't believe in Jesus or, you know, it's not going to make a difference, you know. When we die, we just are in a state of unconsciousness. Uh, that is so wrong. And uh, you just keep praying over uh, your loved ones, your friends, people on your job, because the way of salvation and, and, and the way of God is extremely important uh, uh, to, to mankind in general. Amen? Now, I know there's a lot of craziness going on right now, and the scoffers say, you know, you, you Christians are talking about Jesus coming for the last 2,000 years. But remember this, a thousand years is for the Lord, but a day. And a day, a thousand years. So if you come back tomorrow, that equals two days. Amen. So uh, we thank God that. Amen. We have a glorious Savior in Jesus Christ. Amen. And he has taken our profession of faith in Jesus Christ. And because that is so dear to the heart of God, he is willing to give you and I all things. Amen. Uh, he that spared not his only son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him? freely give you and I all things. Um, but before we go into uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 8, 
I just want to break down uh, Romans chapter uh, 1 through 6 real quickly because we're, we're looking into this, this glorious gospel and, and how we now have a better covenant based on better promises. Uh, Romans 1 through 3, uh, it is concluded that all men are guilty before God. Romans 1 through 6 says, uh, all men are guilty before God. The Jews are guilty because they had the law and couldn't keep it. The Gentiles are guilty even though they did not have the law, they had a conscience. And, and, and God says they, they didn't keep that either. So Romans 1 through 3 says all men are guilty before God. Romans 3, 21 through 31, but now the righteousness of God is revealed in the declaration of the gospel. Amen. Uh, let's look at that. Romans 3, 21. Romans 3 and verse 21. It says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, Unto all and upon all that unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness. For the remissions of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of them that believe in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No. But by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deed of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yes, we establish the law. And so, uh, Romans 3, 21 through 31, we see uh, the righteousness of God is revealed in the declaration of the gospel. Romans 4, 1 through 8, we see the new covenant. We see the new covenant which was revealed to Abraham. The new covenant, which was revealed to Abraham. Galatians 3 and 8. Galatians 3 and 8. And it says, And the scriptures, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now, uh, we know that Abraham believed God. Genesis 15, Genesis 15, and verse 6. Genesis 15 and verse 6, and it says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he believed in the Lord, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. 
Romans chapter 4 and verse 1. Romans chapter 4 and verse 1. What shall we, what shall we say then? That Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what says the scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that works is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without work, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So Paul is saying emphatically how important it is uh, that we let go of the works of the law and be totally cognizant or totally aware that we walk this walk by grace through faith. Faith takes what grace has provided. Grace takes what faith takes what grace has provided. Now, uh, the scriptures are very clear that Abraham uh, was under the same covenant as you and I. You know, even though he's in the Old Testament, he didn't walk under the law. He walked under grace. Now, this is very interesting. Um, I used to think that when he, when him and uh, Sarah got their names changed, I thought it was just through the power of confession. But um, if you look into the uh, Hebrew alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet uh, is very clear that when God changed their names, when he changed their names, he put in their names the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which means grace. So uh, in Abraham's uh, name and in Sarah's name is the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet which means grace. So, so there was a combination. Uh, the Spirit of God graced him, and in that grace, he also confessed the things that be not as though it were. And in the combination of his faith being released in the grace, him and Sarah started to age backwards. Now, I, I know most of us always don't think about that. She didn't look 90 having either. Now, this scripture is confirmed because a Blimenech, a Blimenech saw her at 90 and wanted her to be in his harem. I know that way so you up this morning. <laughs> He wanted her to be in his harem. And because Abraham was afraid, he told her to go along with it. Just go along with it. You'll be all right. And uh, a woman that didn't have that in mind, but before uh, he could touch Sarah, he had all kinds of dreams of what was going to happen to him. And uh, he told uh, Abraham, what, what is wrong with you? You know, you almost got me killed. So this grace 
It's for every aspect of your life. Amen. Amen. And uh, I believe if, if, you know, I've always said this, you know, God says, how deep do you want it? I'll give you all you, I'll give you all you can say. Amen. And they age backward and receive the promise. Now, uh, I know we got all these anti-aging clinics and all like that, but ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Yeah. If you believe God yeah. for that for that supernatural impartation, let it be done unto you according to your faith. Amen? Yeah. And so it says in Genesis chapter 17, Genesis chapter 17, we're going into the uh, the ramification of our great salvation. In Genesis chapter 17, uh, verse 5, it says, Neither shall your name any more be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations I made thee. He said it's already done. I made thee. And then verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yes, and I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And Sarah that is ninety years old? And Abraham said, under God, oh that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son in thee, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And then we see how uh, you know, God told Abraham these things when he was 75. And now he's coming in uh, to the age of 100. And um, I believe he's after Ishmael. You know, uh, I believe he's, he's really beginning to tap in. It's, about, it's been about 25 years. And he begins to tap in to what the Lord wants for him. How many of you know that spiritual things many times are not so readily comprehended? You and I both know that uh, there's been times where God was speaking to us and, and we just didn't get it. It just took time for us to comprehend what he was saying. And it's been 25 years now. Ishmael has come, you know, but Ishmael is a work of the flesh. Amen. Ishmael is a work of the law or of the flesh, and Isaac is a work of grace. Amen. And I believe God allows many times the clock to tick on purpose. You know, well, you know when we're believing Him uh, many times for whatever. I believe many times he allows that clock to tick because he wants to get all of the glory. Yes. Amen. 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 Now the boy had a son at 75. So he must be eating his spinach. <laughs> but now it's 25 years later. I know that's right. And all hope is gone. But this is the testimony. Romans chapter 4 Romans chapter 4, verse 17. This is the testimony of 
Abraham. Let's back to 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Because faith takes what grace has provided. The grace is there to do anything. But faith takes what grace has provided. To the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. It says he couldn't find what he needed in natural hope. And so uh, he went into the supernatural and begin to see, you know, what God had for him in the spirit. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And not, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own. Now this is, this is some tall doctrine, folks. It says, he considered not his own body, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, Giving glory to God. Strong faith praises God. Amen. You know your faith is strong when you can't help but thank the Lord and praise the Lord. You're driving around in your car praising the Lord. You wake up in the morning telling the Lord, I'm so grateful for another day. And I'm going to praise you whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. And you know your faith is getting strong when in all things you can give thanks. That murmuring spirit is gone. You know, that anger disposition is gone. And no matter what you see, you are now praising God. Amen. Because you know he's the one who quickens and makes alive. And your words, uh, your words are spirit life. Amen. When you begin to say what God says about you. Jesus said, my words are spirit, and they are life, yes. and by the Holy Ghost, when you say what thus says the Lord, amen, now, spirit life is coming through you, amen, and targeting whatever that thing is you believe in God for, amen, and now, the ability for it to be quickened and made alive is before you, and it says, uh, not being weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now look at verse 21. And being fully persuaded. Hey, I mean, he's 100 years old. And he is fully persuaded yeah. that him and Sarah are going to make a baby. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to be all graphic, but they just wasn't both sitting in a chair rocking. <laughs> there is one immaculate conception. Amen. So between 190 years between them, they are working on making this boy called Laughter. Isn't that something? That God would even name Isaac. His name meant Laughter. Glory to God. 
I mean, some of you are working on your miracle of laughter. Yeah. Amen. Because the devil told you you can't have it. Circumstance has told you you can't have it. But you are in tune with that inward witness and the witness of the Holy Ghost, which is greater than the witness of man and of circumstances and situations. Won't let you go from that thing. And because the witness of God is greater, glory to God, you will have the last leg. Amen. Amen. I leave the promise of laughter. Amen. To the miracle uh, ministry of the Holy Ghost is coming your way. Amen. Because you are undaunting. Amen. And you refuse to relent in your faith. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. So now this is what God is saying. God is saying, I don't want your works. I don't want you working on it. All I want you to do is work the word and get your faith up to a point, amen, where you are fully persuaded with my word, and then you will see manifestation, amen, and that manifestation is going to put laughter in your soul. Glory to God. That manifestation will be the witness that you are being led by the Spirit of God, is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure and it doesn't matter how difficult it might seem amen let God be true and every man a liar amen let God be true and let the will of God be done amen to the glory of God amen so I believe it was not only his confession it was the impartation of the grace of God along with his obedience to call the thing that be not as though it were and to praise God and to praise God amen my folk are going around talking about that old man said him and his wife are going to have a baby but I believe he was so rich so many folk was uh, working for him, they had to whisper. The, the, the man was very blessed. He was blessed before his name got changed. And now, with this newfound grace in his life, he was really on the move. Glory to God. Amen. And so it is the will of God. Amen. That we choose to be chosen in the grace of God. And uh, now, Romans 5, we see the covenant of truth. Amen. And uh, we see that Romans 12 through 17 lets us know that man has to make a choice just like Adam made. Now, Adam made a choice, but it's, it was the wrong choice. But now, let's look at uh, Romans 5, begin with verse 12. Romans 5, begin with verse 12. Can somebody give me some water, please? Romans 5, begin with verse 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. For they all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. We know that Jesus is called the second Adam. Amen. 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 
who is the figure of him that was to come. Now watch this. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through, for if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have the bound unto many, thank you, have the bound unto many, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So this is what he's saying. He's saying that in Adam, in Adam's transgression, if it doesn't seem fair to you, when Adam sinned, all humanity went into the prison of the law of sin and death. But man has to make a choice, just like Adam made a choice. And when he received Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior by faith, he now goes, he now goes into the prison of everlasting life. So if you don't think it's fair that through the sin of Adam, everyone came into the, the prison of the law of sin and death. He says much more, they that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, when you receive Christ, you come into the prison of everlasting life. And you can't get out. See, he shows us the similitude of the two. So, you know, you can stop sweating, you know, you know, and lost your, you know, lost your salvation three weeks ago. You just get it back. That's not what it says. It says, when Adam sinned, he came into the prison of death and damnation. But man has to make a choice. And when you get saved, you come into the prison of everlasting life. The abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And it's not by works. It's by faith. It's not by works. This thing is by faith. And the more your faith is mingled in this grace, the more you will begin to walk subconsciously in your blessing. Now we've all been in this, Lord, I believe this for this, or, you know, I need this, and, 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 and you know, and, and we're, 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 we're in the word and we are praying and, you know, many times we're, we're uh, comparing our time before God with the miracle we're believing for. But when your faith begins to really increase, see, faith is a rest. And you'll just begin to believe you receive and you'll just begin to walk in the peace of God which passes all understanding and when you are engulfed in the peace of God that's a good indicator that your faith is strong because uh, Paul says in the book of Colossians and let the peace of God rule you let it rule now we're in baseball season and that, that you see the umpire is a great big old guy. And, and, and he's right there at the batter's box. And he says, strike, you know, ball, 
Yeah. And you know, and sometimes the guys go irate, and uh, many times the the, the, the umpire have a big belly, and you just keep them off with his belly, and they try to get in his face, and, and they can't get through that belly. You know, the umpire rules, and 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 then the apostle Paul says, let the peace of God rule. Amen. You know, faith is not a feeling. It is a work of grace Amen. as you believe God. Amen. Amen. And it's a wonderful thing for you to wake up with the promise. Amen. Amen. Without comparing your works to receive your manifestation. Amen. Amen. So, the gift of righteousness. Amen. Which comes by believing God. Amen. Amen. Put you in the prison of spirit life. Eternal life. The gift of God. Amen. And the blessing of your inheritance in the kingdom of God. But it's a grace and it's a faith mingling together. Man must make a choice. I want you to see this again. When Adam sinned, now Jesus is the second Adam. We know that. And when Adam sinned, all humanity died. But in Jesus Christ, if you have this faith righteousness, this faith righteousness in Jesus Christ, all men live. Do you see the two prisons? One's a bad prison. The other one is a great prison. Amen. Because of, and you can't get out by your works. Because you don't come by works. I know many of you come from losing your salvation. Okay. Okay, the Lord, but that's the last time. And the Lord said, that's the last time. Now get over there. But that's not what the word says. The first Adam put us in this prison. And when you believe in the second Adam, you are in this prison of faith, righteousness, and you can't get out. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. So continue to praise God for the free gift. Amen. And the second Adam in Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now, now there it is. Um, let's go over here to First John. First John, because we want to clear up some things. First John chapter 1, beginning with verse 7. It says, First John chapter 1, verse 7. If we walk but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, this word cleanses us, or cleanse, is in the perfect tense, which, is, which means it's, it is a position where you are in with continual action. It has continual action. So it can say it this way, the blood of Jesus Christ, since you got born again, cleanses you all day, 24-7, for the rest of your life, you are under the spout where the blood is coming out and you have a position in Christ that cannot be moved. Amen. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and that cannot be moved. Amen. And if you know that, amen, you know you have a direct mind into the presence of God because as he is, so are we in this world. And when the Father sees us, he sees us in the precious blood, in the perfect blood, of Jesus Christ, 
Your prayers are heard. Amen? Amen. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. I used to love to be at the uh, Brother Hagen's uh, crusade. And um, he had an awesome healing ministry. And uh, I used to always want uh, Brother Hagen to lay his hands on me. And I was amazed of his meeting. And I remember one, one night I was just sitting there. And he was about five people away. And I was like, oh, glory to God. Oh, glory, glory. Next thing I know, I was on the ground. And he was all the way up there. I could never stand that anointing. I always fell out before it came, before he touched me. But, you know, I said that to say that, you know, uh, our faith, because of the blood, our prayers are answered. And this thing, in actuality, is supposed to work from the inside out. And not from the outside in. Amen. Now I know the word of God says the lay hands on the sick and they recover. Mm -hmm. But there is supposed to be an understanding that the blood has cleansed you. Your prayers have been heard. This is the confidence that we have in him Amen. that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Why? Because there's a 24-7 work of the blood over your life from the time you got saved until the time you see Jesus. Amen. And if we know he hears us, we know that we have the petition that we asked of him. Amen? Amen? Because you're in Christ. And because you're in Christ, the Father hears your prayers that are in line with his will. Amen? Amen. And you have the petition that you desired of him. Now, that doesn't mean there's not a fight. That's right. Because the devil will tell you, you're not healed. If you was healed, you wouldn't be in that pain. Why were you forced to go get those pills? You call yourself healed, and you've been taking them three times a day. You ain't healed. But the word says you are healed because you are cleansed by the blood and there's nothing between you and your Savior. Amen. You are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. And when the Father looks on you, he looks on you as one of the sons of God. He looks on you and I as family. And he said, fret not my little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What do you want? What do you need? God says, I will, I will avail that to you because I look at you as my favorite daughter, as my favorite son, because you are now in Christ and you are covered by his precious blood. He says, uh, if we walk but if we walk in the light, as he is light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now I want to clear something up, because, uh, and I'll close with this. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, First John 1 9. Somebody says, well, what about 1 John 1 9? Which says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I want to show you something. We confess our sins because we are forgiven. Not to be forgiven. Because when you accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, all your sins were forgiven. Amen? Past, present, and future, you have, the, you have a covenant with Almighty God that all your sins are forgiven. Amen? All 
all your sins are forgiven. And so it's like your, your little children, your, your children or your grandchildren, they're four years, five years old, and you told them don't go in the cookie jar, and, and, and there's only two of them in the house, and, and, and you go to the cookie jar, and they all gone. And you know you didn't eat So, you say, uh, who ate the cookie? And there's a holy hush in the house. <laughs> Ain't nobody saying that. And then, okay, your little five-year-old grandbaby, your little five-year-old baby comes and says, Daddy, I, Mommy, I, 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 I'm sorry. I ate them. Is that when you forgave them? No. They were already forgiven. We confess because we are forgiven. And we come to the Lord and we talk to him about the situation, you know. And uh, uh, David said, Lord, remember, I was born in sin. And he put that argument together. He said, I was born in sin and shaping in iniquity. You know, uh, confession is us talking to God about our frailties. You know, the limitation in our humanity, amen, and faith in him that he is faithful and just and has put us under the spout where the blood is coming out. We are under the waterfall of the blood of Jesus and we are eternally cleansed. Amen. Amen. Now, that's hard to comprehend when you have this works mentality. And that's why I'm preaching this, because we got to get out of this law and grace combination and just receive the grace of God as it is, amen, amen and continue to walk in the grace that has been provided. Amen. The book of 1 John was written, 1 John, uh, the Apostle John is talking to the Gnostics. Now, the Gnostics despised the material world. They considered the only true way to knowledge was through rites and initiations, baptisms, self-flagellations, secret spiritual incantations, and they said that God could not have been flesh because the material world is the essence and source of evil. Hence, the gospel is false. That's what the Gnostics uh, were saying. But John says, and he's telling them, we do Jesus after the flesh. So let's go over here. He says in 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, John lets them know that we knew Jesus after the flesh. He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which, our, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. John is telling these Gnostics, it's too late. You better get your thing together because God put on flesh and we touched him. Amen. We walked with him. Amen. We saw the blind see. We saw the deaf hear. We saw the lame walk. And we saw even the raising of the dead multiple times. God has come in the flesh and we beheld him and we touched him. He was coming against this this false doctrine that was trying to come into the church that the flesh that the flesh could not be Jesus could not be in the flesh or God could not come in the flesh because the flesh had roots of evil in it and John says no we beheld him we touched him we saw him we fellowship with him amen and he is the word of life. Amen. And he tells them, now for you, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. 
But in verse 7, he says, we walked in the light as he is light, and we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Acts 13, 38 and 39. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Psalms 130, verses 3 and 4. If thou, Lord, should mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Matthew 26, 28. For this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. First John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. My last verse, Hebrews 8, 7 through 12. And this is the main clause of the new, of the new covenant. And I'm saying all of this because we've all been taught differently. But you need to know this is that. And when the grace of God is flowing through you, because you understand your sins were already forgiven, and you are under the spout where the blood is coming out, 24-7, 365 days a year, you are the beloved of God, amen, you are precious in his sight, and when the Father sees you, he can only see you in the blood of his son. Hebrews 8, 7 through 12. For if that first covenant had been flawless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand, to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, says the Lord. For this, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Why? For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Yeah, the main clause of the New Testament is that our God is merciful to our unrighteousness and our sins and our iniquities he remembers no more. Amen. And with that, we are a people, amen, who have this faith righteousness and we believe God, amen? amen. We are forgiven and because you're forgiven, you have a right to all God has for you. Now, <coughs> can sin put you back? Absolutely. That's why the Apostle Paul says in Romans 6 and 1, he says, uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. But what sin does, it hinders you in your mind. It causes you to doubt. Amen? That's why you have to know you are forgiven so that even in spite of you, 
you can still receive because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And when you get to a place where you're endeavoring to believe God and possess that promise, he will make sure that he accuses you of something that will cause you to waver in your faith. But the word is clear. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Amen. Amen. We are forgiveness conscious yes. and not sin conscious. Yes. I believe it's uh, I believe it's uh, Colossians chapter 2 Colossians chapter 2 where the Apostle Paul talks about taste, taste not, touch not, handle not. And uh, what he is saying, what he is saying that when we preach all these conditions, uh, taste not, touch not, handle not, it says that all these things, you know, they do not have, uh, they don't make you any better. Somebody help me out. I'm closing with this. If you want to get out, help me out. I bet you find it then, huh? Oh, I found it. Oh, hallelujah, I found it. 21. 21? There you go. 221. All right. So it says, it says, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which ye have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are ye subject to ordinance? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrine of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. What he's saying here is all this touch not, taste not, don't this, don't do that, don't do that, all it does is make you more conscious of sin, but it has it has no dominion over the sensual works of the flesh. So you you're not gonna be delivered by hearing, oh y'all don't hear me. Come on, lights. You ain't this and you ain't that and stop doing it. All to make you more sin conscious, but if you're forgiven, the the strength of sin is the law. And the strength of holiness is grace. The strength of sin is the law. You ever notice when somebody tell you not to do it, there's this strange sensation of sin. I'm the old y'all. That's right. You go somewhere they say, okay, this whole thing is, is blocked off. Don't go over here. You see people just on purpose. You know? <laughs> Why? Because the strength of sin is the law. Man is a trespasser. Amen? But grace makes you holy. But it starts from the inside out. And the fruit of the Spirit working in you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. These things begin to come against the things on the inside. Amen? And 
grace causes holiness. So as we internalize this grace, there's going to be a greater work of the character of Christ in us and by the Holy Ghost. My last scripture, I'm glad you said that. Watch this. And besides this, 2 Peter 1 and 5. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. Watch this. And to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have, and watch this now, and have forgotten that he was purged from his own sin. So, what the word is saying, when you don't receive the forgiveness of sins, when you have amnesia that you are forgiven, then you become further away from the character that, that Christ wants to manifest in us. So say this with me. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. That your word is abiding in me. That your word is abiding in me. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. In Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. And the best is yet to come. And the best is yet to come. I am greatly blessed. I am greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am highly favored. And I am deeply loved. And I am deeply loved. As the righteousness of God. As the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I receive my inheritance. I receive my inheritance. I'm a royal priest. I'm a royal priest. I'm a holy nation. I'm a, I'm a chosen generation. I'm a peculiar vessel. I'm a peculiar vessel. Who God called out of darkness God God into his marvelous light. Thank, Thank you for your great love towards me. Thank you for eternally cleansing me. Thank you for eternally cleansing me. And my confession is today. And my confession is today. I'm greatly blessed. I'm greatly blessed. And I'm highly favored. And I'm highly favored. And I'm deeply Love, and I'm deeply loved in the beloved one, in the beloved one Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, my Savior. My Savior. And I prophesy over you today that you would know your sins are forgiven and that manifestation of the supernatural kind would come into your house, on your children, on your grandchildren, and that this river of grace that comes with the new covenant of God's favor, the better covenant based on better promises, that you would receive the gift of grace, the gift of faith, and that these twin towers would be yours all the days of your life, and that you would know he has been merciful to your unrighteousness and your sins and iniquity, he remembers no more. You are God's favorite son. You are God's favorite daughter. So rejoice that you are greatly blessed, that you are highly favored, and that you are deeply loved, and nothing can separate you ever from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I speak to every infirmity, to every sickness, to every work of lack, poverty, barrenness, scarceness, that which is not enough. I speak to these things and I command them to be twice dead and plucked up by the root and that you would prosper, and that you would walk in health, 
because your soul is prospering in the word of his grace. Today that sickness and disease has died in your body. That pain is leaving the temple and you are walking in the newness of life. You are walking in the free favors of God that was so profusely and lavishly rest on your life. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Because you now have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I speak over your life a reigning anointing. A reigning anointing. A reigning anointing. And like Peter, you will get out the boat and walk on the waters of life and see the wonders of God in the deep to the glory of God. I speak this over you and your family for the generations to come in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God praise. Yeah. 